Hi everybody, I hope that you're all very well. Donc salut tout le monde, j'espère que vous allez tous très bien. So today's video, I've just drunk water. <laughs> Je viens de boire de l'eau. Um, today's video is actually, um, I'm going to be telling you about the new Larousse uh, website. Donc je vais vous parler de, du nouveau site web uh, Larousse. Larousse is probably... Um, the most well-known dictionary, um, you know, the most well-known dictionaries in France, in my opinion. Donc, uh, la marque Larousse est probablement le, la marque de Dico, enfin, tu as la plus bien connue en France. Um, and they've had a bit of an update. Oui, ils ont fait une mise à jour. Ils ont mis à jour uh, leur site web. So, I really, really, really just want to just give you a little idea. Donc, moi, j'ai envie de vous donner une petite idée. When you were younger, shall we say, quand vous étiez plus jeune, disons, if there was something that you wanted to ask your mom or dad, donc s'il y avait quelque chose que vous voulez, euh, vous voulez poser à, à, à vos parents, let's say, for example, that when you were eight years old, quand vous aviez huit ans, imagine that you said to your mom or your dad, mommy, what is a surrogate mother? You know, uh, qu'est-ce que c'est une mère porteuse? Your mom would not have used another language necessarily to explain that to you. Uh, effectivement, votre mère, elle n'aurait pas, uh, elle n'aurait pas utilisé ou elle ne se serait pas utilisée d'une autre langue uh, pour vous l'expliquer. So she would have just basically, or he would have, your father, um, uh, they would have used, um, they would have just explained it in, in, in basic terms. Il aurait expliqué um, d'une manière plus basique. So they would have said something like, Oh, you know, it's a lady that has a baby for another lady, or something like that. C'est une femme qui, uh, qui porte un enfant pour une autre femme. So, we kind of understand that to learn words, we don't always need to look them up and translate them. Donc, on arrive à comprendre que pour apprendre des mots, on n'a pas toujours besoin de, de, de les regarder en ligne pour les traduire. So, in other words, what I'd really like you to start doing is I'd like you to start using a French-French dictionary instead of a French-English dictionary. Donc, j'aimerais bien que vous utilisez un dico français-français au lieu de français-anglais. And I, for this purpose, would really like to talk to you about the Larousse page. Donc, uh, justement, j'aimerais bien vous en parler de la page Larousse. So, um... I'm going to tell you why it's a really good page to be using. Donc, je vais vous dire pourquoi c'est une, enfin, une page superbe pour vos besoins principaux, for your main needs. So, let's talk about it. First things first. In France, we love books that are white. We love white books. The title might be in black. There might be a little bit of a picture, but we love white books. En France, on adore les livres blancs. If you go into any bookshop, you will see that most of the time it's white. Really, the sm I swear to God, like, you, you walk in France and bookshops, it just seems to be so much white. Um, donc, en France, vous allez voir que les... <laughs> Seriously, I'm not even joking. Les librairies, euh, effectivement, la plupart des bouquins euh, sont blancs, okay? So, what this means is that we like white on white. So, don't be, don't find it weird that the little search engine on this page, at the top on the right, is a white box on a white page. Donc, um... Ne le trouvez pas bizarre le fait que le, le moteur de recherche, c'est blanc sur blanc, white on white. But that is where you're going to type in the word. Ça, c'est là où vous allez euh, taper le mot. To the right, on the right, in red, à droite, en rouge, you are going to see um, what is the main definition. Vous allez voir ce qui est principalement le, la définition principale. So, when you look up certain words, a lot of the time, there is like, there are six or seven or eight, possible definitions or nuances or whatever. Ok, donc euh, d'habitude, euh, en cherchant quoi que ce soit comme mot, il y a souvent euh, plusieurs définitions, euh, voilà quoi, 7 à 8, euh, 7 à 8 défi définitions. So what this red function on the right does is tell you that, look guys, I know you're looking at this word and this is probably the most common word, the most common uh, definition for it, or the expression underneath is one of the most common expressions. Donc c'est comme si euh, la partie euh, en rouge, ça vous dit, euh, alors effectivement, salut, euh, salut tout le monde, donc ici, ici vous allez trouver la définition principale, euh, ce, ce qu'il vous faut. Donc là, euh, tout de suite. So that's just really useful, donc ça c'est très utile. Um, no one's saying that you can't then use the definitions on the left. It's just if you're in a hurry, that will often solve your question quite quickly. 
Donc, si vous êtes pressé, ça va résoudre le problème euh, assez vite. Then on the left, you will see that we have different definitions. Après, à gauche, vous allez voir qu'il y a plusieurs définitions. Try and respect the fact that definitions are in order. OK? Respectez l'ordre des définitions. So, for example, the one at the bottom, celui en bas, it's not, so, celle en bas, pardon, définition, um, it's not going to be the, the, the first interpretation of the word. Ce ne sera pas la première interprétation du mot. So, anyway, so the definitions is great. That's a really useful section. And it might well be, then, that if you're looking this word up in uh, using this website, that you don't understand the definition. Ça se peut que vous ne compreniez pas la définition uh, si vous cherchez uh, ce mot uh, ici. So, um, I guess I don't mind if you use, a, you know, like an, a French-English dictionary as well. Ça ne me gêne pas si vous utilisez enfin, un dico anglais-français aussi. But just try with the French one first. Another idea would be to use an adolescent or a child's dictionary in French. Une autre idée serait d'utiliser un, un dico adolescent ou euh, enfin, pour des enfants en France. That would be really, that would be really smart. Ça serait malin. Um, because the, the definition would be a little bit less, um, you know, wordy. Donc la définition sera un peu moins intello, quoi. So, then underneath the definitions, you will notice that uh, you then have a section called expressions. Donc ensuite, il y a une petite partie, une section, une partie qui s'appelle uh, uh, expression. So, this is for if you were to look up a word, and commonly, this word features in expressions. Donc ça, c'est pour si vous regardiez un mot, et euh, largement, euh, ce mot va apparaître, effectivement, dans, ça va faire partie des expressions. When you're learning new words, uh, be really mindful of whether or not that it's a word that stands alone, or whether it's a word that you kind of need to learn as a compound, whether you need to learn it with, you know, what's on the left and what's on the right. Donc quand vous apprenez des mots, il faut vraiment faire attention. Est-ce que c'est un mot, euh, effectivement, qui, qui apparaît tout seul ou est-ce qu'il faut faire bien attention à une forme composée, quoi, de plusieurs mots en même temps So, for example, we then have the expressions that commonly feature this word, and that is very useful. Right, underneath is my favorite thing. Mon dessous, il y a ma partie préférée, ma partie favorite. Synonyms and antonyms. Synonyme et, euh, et contraire. So, a synonym is a word which means the same thing, largely, not exactly the same thing, but a similar idea. Donc, euh, synonyme, c'est un mot qui veut dire la même chose. Pas exactement la même chose, mais euh, euh, la plupart du temps, une nuance similaire, quelque chose de similaire. And an antonym is a word which would mean the opposite. Euh, un contraire, un contraire c'est un mot qui veut dire le, le contraire. <laughs> so, why this, is, this website site is really clever is that it gives you the synonyms and the antonyms for each of the main definitions. Donc, euh, pourquoi j'aime bien ce site web C'est parce que ça vous donne les synonymes, les contraires pour chaque définition euh, différente. So, for example, this is a really dumb, dumb equivalent, but say, for example, you looked up the word um, uh, beat, you know, beat. So, you looked it up and you'd be like, past tense of to beat, you know, beat a drum or somebody beat you in a competition, whatever, 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 and it would say, okay, you know, uh, you'd look up synonyms, and it would say, you know, um, he was beaten, he, you know, he lost, uh, you know, antonyms would be he didn't win, um, you know, uh, the loser, whatever, so all ideas around the word, if you were like, oh gosh, man, I'm beat, meaning I'm really tired, then the antonym would be, then the synonym would be, I'm exhausted, I'm shattered, I'm knackered, I'm, I'm bushed, whatever you want to say. I'm done in. So, do you understand? So, the, the, the synonym and the antonym is really important. Donc, vous comprenez, donc, euh, les synonymes et les contraires sont très importants. Um, and synonyms are a really cool way to expand your vocabulary. It's a really cool way to dev develop your vocabulary. C'est une manière formidable de, 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 effectivement, de faire développer, euh, de, de développer votre, vo um, votre vocabulaire. So, for example, if you said... Um, so when you speak to somebody, most of the time, there's going to be the main words. Donc, quand vous parlez à quelqu'un, la plupart du temps, il y aura des, des, des mots principaux. But it's possible that someone's going to use kind of not one of the main words. C'est possible que quelqu'un se serve d'un mot euh, qui n'est pas... Euh, 
enfin, qui soit pas le, enfin, le, 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 le mot principal, le mot commun. It, maybe they'll use kind of one of the lesser known words. Ça se peut qu'ils utilisent un mot moins connu. So it's kind of cool if when you know what this word means, donc c'est chouette, euh, donc après avoir appris ce que ça veut dire ce mot, if you kind of read all the other words that kind of mean something similar, de lire tous les autres mots qui veulent dire quelque chose de similaire. Also, it stops you having to look up every word. So I don't need you to massively focus on all the other words. I just need you to be like, okay, just read through them all once. It just expands your vocabulary, okay? Good. Um, j'ai pas besoin que vous lisiez tous les autres mots. Enfin, j'ai juste, j'ai juste besoin que vous lisiez tous les autres mots. Je veux juste que vous lisiez tous les autres mots sans sans faire trop d'attention, sans y faire trop d'attention. Lovely. Um, so that's really useful. That section is really, 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 really useful. Now it might be that you only find out what the word means. So if you were trying to find out what a word means from this website instead of going the English route. Donc si vous essayez de trouver ce que, ce que ça voulait dire un mot de ce site web sans, sans avoir accédé à euh, un, un dico euh, anglais-français, then it might be that the synonyms are what's going to help you. Ça se peut que ce soit les, les synonymes qui vous aident. So it might be the synonyms that reading words which mean the same thing, you go, ah, so that's what it means. Great. Good. But anyway, it's re the synonym section is what's really going to, you know, uh, push you uh, with your vocabulary. C'est vraiment cette partie-là qui va vous pousser avec, avec votre vocabulaire. Um, Often there'll be a little section called homonym, which is just basically uh, other words which, are, which sound the same. Donc souvent il y a une autre petite partie qui, uh, qui contient des homonymes. Donc ça c'est uh, des mots qui... Uh, par exemple, um, aller could be une allée, like an alley where people walk, or aller the verb, or whatever. Un aller simple, like with a, you know, or je suis allé with one e, je suis allé with two e's. You know, just words which sound the same. Depending on the word, there won't always be this, there won't always be this. There will then be a party, um, speak in English, Luke. Selon le mot, et enfin, c'est pas toujours là, il y aura pas toujours cette partie, there will be a section called um, um, difficulty, which is a little bit depressing, <laughs> qui est un peu déprimant, because it's kind of interesting things. So, for example, it would be about maybe this word it'll sort of say often with this word then we will use this adverb and sorry we will use this part per minute speak english luke we will use this preposition and this preposition so it's it's normal to use prepositions or it might say um donc souvent ça dit par exemple c'est normal avec ce mot de d'utiliser cette préposition et être et aussi cette préposition là it might also say okay uh, notice since we've modified the spelling in french a few years ago with the reforms that we might write it this way uh, souvent ça va vous dire avec les réformes de l'orthographe il y a quelques ouais, quelques années donc effectivement maintenant c'est écrit de cette manière là, là plutôt que whatever it might just talk to you about spelling so that's another really really good uh, section it's kind of like these are things you kind of need to know about all right So, um, this is the first part of this video. Donc, voici la première partie de cette vidéo. I'm going to do a second part of this video where I'm going to look at a nice sheet of uh, very posh marketing French. Donc, je vais regarder uh, une, une feuille, un PDF de, de français assez huppé, quite posh. And we're going to use the dictionary to, in the method I've talked about, to kind of analyze some of the words. Et on va utiliser, on va se servir de, de ce dico pour, pour, pour bien comprendre les mots que peut-être vous aviez pas, the words that you didn't have. All right, so I think that should be quite useful for you. Je pense que ça va être assez utile pour, pour vous. So, yeah, save it then to your, your favorite, larousse.fr. Larousse, by the way, means the redhead. Uh, so shout out to Signet, who is my favorite redhead. Uh, brilliant, 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 brilliant. Um, uh, good. All right, then. So see you in part two where we are going to look at the, uh, we're going to use the dictionary with some marketing speak. All right. See you soon.